Hello everyone and welcome to this new Wii episode for the STM32 tutorial. And today we are finalizing our last chapter related the clock control and understanding for the STM32. So, so far we have been seeing how to change the clock, how uh, to understand many of the parameters. And this chapter is a little bit of summary on the impact when we change the clock and what things we should be careful about. We will see um, the clock change on a different microcontroller, and also we will see the, the impact of these changes on different other parts. So within the series, as I said previously, this is the last and fourth episode where we will take the important takeaways of the discussion. Okay, so let's quickly um, go through the chapter and see what will be the discussion about. So first of all, we are going to upload the clock or updating the clock for another STM32. So each one of this episode, we have been choosing a different STM32. So we can see how we can adjust, uh, not the code, but the, the uh, IDI or the interface to still using the same code with a different microcontroller within the same STM32 family. After that, we will see the major impact, which would be the bus clock speed and how we can create the function to uh, adjust on that and to understand why we need to be very careful about the bus's clock speed. And then finally, we will see the major impact um, of those uh, on the power of the microcontroller or the power consumption of the microcontroller. So, and this is one of the picture that we will be using later on to see how this is changing through the clock speed change. Uh, for the board this time, we are going to use the black peel, or for the microcontroller, it's the STM32 F411 CU, uh, CEU6. And as usual, for the signal sampling device, we are going to use a Regal MSO5000 series. Okay, so you, if you are interested to finalize all your knowledge regarding how to change and take care of your changes of the clock speed of the microcontroller, just follow this episode. Same as of all the previous time, we started by adapting our code or adding a new microcontroller to show the flexibility of the code that we are going to use. And this time we are going to, to make another step is to change also, also the clock of the STM32 F411 that we added instead of the 407 that we used last time. So let me hide this picture and we start by uh, checking in the MX or the STM cube MX and we change our microcontroller. This is the first step. Now we wait a little bit until it load all its new things. This happened from time to time to update their libraries. So meanwhile, we can uh, go back to our Kale and update quickly the code. So first of all, what we need to do is we can go to device and in device, we change the device as usual, STM32F411CEU, this one. So we select this one and after that, we go back again, we go to the debug and for the debug, we put the ST linker and we check and nothing is connected, interestingly enough. And I know why, because I didn't connect the right one. So let me reconnect with the right one here. That's not powering the right way. This should be working now. Let's check it just a second. Yeah, sometimes I connect, I connect it directly to the USB. Okay, that should be good now. So if I put ST link, and all is good. So we connected here and we do have the right, uh, we recognize the microcontroller. So if I go to flash, I need to click this reset and run. And for pack, this one is not enabled, which is perfect. So I'm putting OK. I'm checking about my uh, debugger, it's, sorry, my assembler. So a C99, that's exactly what I need. So all is good here. So now, we quickly go back to our STMMX. So we do have this one generated and we don't want the STM32 
F407, but now it's the CEU6. And this is the one that we would like to explore now. Okay, so it's a much smaller microcontroller, but it's a quite a little small beast, so I, I like it a lot. And we go quickly check the data configuration. And as we have shared in the first video, this microcontroller have only MCO1. So we will see the output or of MCO1 only. And if we would like to have a hundred megahertz, what we need to do, and we already have this microcontroller board have a 25, let me show here. It has already a 25 o'clock within the board. So going back here and going to RCC, I'm going to enable my master clock output. And for the high speed clock, I will put crystal ceramic resonator. And I'm putting here, I would like to have the HSE as an input and the PLL clock. So if I just do it like that, it will generate a huge problem. So I will write here 100 and let the program make all the computation. So here we get the parameters that we need. So M equal 12, the N is 96, P is two, Q is four. And for this one, this is one, this is two, and this is divided by one. Okay, so hopefully now if I get back to my, let's go back to the code here. And what we are going to do is same as the previous code. We go back. This is the code that we used to have the STM32F4 uh, 168 megahertz. We just copy this. We also copy the little, the small command that we do have here. This one is using an HSE of 25 megahertz, 411. And we already put it in the library here. We put up the input. So if it's in STM32F411, my HSE clock is 25. So I'm sure about that. So here I'm putting, I would like to have it as 100 megahertz, okay? And what I just need the rest of the things to do is to change those parameters, same as the one written here. So I will start with the one before the clock. So the M is equal 12. The N will be equal 96. The P is equal to 2, same, and Q equal to 4. Now we go after the system clock. So the AHP um, clock is one, which is good. APB one will be equal to two. And APB two will be equal to one. Okay, because this APB two can take 100 megahertz. Okay, so let's save. And before building, I need to comment these lines because I should not input this one. It will destroy the microcontroller, so be very careful. And also, I do not have the MCO2 clock now. This microcontroller have only MCO1. And in the MCO1, what I would like to read is my PLL clock and no division. So what I would like to read is just no division. I should be reading the output. So if I go back to my STM cube here, so, and this one is activated and I put the PLL clock in my oscilloscope or signal analyzer, I should be reading a hundred megahertz. Okay, so let's first, before even updating, just see, so the PLL clock is not actually um, initiated, but what we can do, what we can initially do is just read the HSE, just to be sure. Even the HSE is not activated, actually. Yeah, that's... Uh, so what we can do is just bringing this library, this new library here, which is this, uh, sorry, this new function, which is clock STM32 F4100 megahertz. We copy it. We take it here within the function that we do have. 
Okay, and then let's activate the 100 megahertz and see what would happen. So here, let's take this one from there, and we are should be good. Okay, so let's save, build. Zero error, zero problem. So let's put like this. This one we are going to load right now, and I'm bringing the picture from the oscilloscope. So this is the oscilloscope right now. There is nothing. The, the MCO is not even activated and the D0 is connected to the MCO1. Uh, so let's load the code and see what's happening. So now we are reading the clock and we do have 100 megahertz and this is the clock speed of our microcontroller. Okay, so you have seen now from scratch how we have built the whole microcontroller clock and how so easily we can create the clock that we need to use and we used each time the maximum clock but you still can use something intermediate intermediate between them okay so this was the first step that we wanted to review the next one would be uh, about how we can um, take care about this. And this is the, one of the first um, caution that we need to worry about is going and the major impact, the buzzer's clock speed. So let me show you, let me go back to this picture. This is a very important picture. So you see here, you do have a new frequency as an input to your microcontroller. And this new frequency going to these buses will impact the other peripheral, same uh, like UART, I2C, or, um, the, uh, or uh, the SPI. So it's extremely important to know, or even the timers also. The timers, it's much easier, but uh, you need, so you still have here the ABP2 timers connected here and ABP1 timers also connected here. So you still need to know exactly what is the frequency that they are getting so you can have the right timers working for you. Okay, so now to, to, to get the values that are inputted here, I already prepared the functions and those functions are here. These are the function that I created APB clock speed, APB1 clock speed, APB2 clock speed. So those functions are simply, if you follow the previous um, episode, so same as here, let me let me hide all this code so it make a bit more sense for you. Okay, so this one, so for A, AHP clock speed is the one to check the output from here. It gets you, sorry, this one here. So it checks the division that we have here by checking the register, the configuration register, and then it gives you the output of this one. Then the APB one will check the register or the value of the prescaler and apply it. And you will know what is the value applied to uh, the APB two, APB one. Same for APB two. And prepare the function here. There's an APB1, AHP clock speed, APB2 clock speed, and also AHP clock speed. And this will help you to be sure that the values that you have in your microcontroller are working properly. Okay. So let's build and then load the code. And after loading the code, let's go in the debug mode. Okay, we are getting into the debug mode and we just run the code. So to put the function, this one, this, um, uh, this uh, variables and to read them, I just went here, I added them to the watch list. And you can see, so AHB, the value is 100 megahertz. The APB one is 50. And if we go back here, APB one value input is 50. APB two, values input is 100 megahertz. So we can get the values. So later on when we will start, 
working and playing with all the other peripherals, we have a clear idea about the input value of the clock. Okay, well, this was the um, first major impact that we do have. We need to get extremely worried about how um, the, the clock will influence the other peripherals of the microcontroller. Now we can go to the next and final step. So let me leave the debug mode and we will explore together how the, um, the power consumption is impacted by changing the clock. And this happened by looking at when the clock change, how much power consumption are we going to take? And we can visualize this by controlling and seeing how the current current is and power is changing. Okay, so let's start it and do it. So what we need to do is just close or hide this clock, save, build. Okay, now let's load the code. So this code will generate the normal clock speed of 16 megahertz and to see how the power consumption is, what I'm going to do right now is to visualize how much current is consumed by a 16 megahertz clock. So let me disconnect the this one and you can see that is 45 ampere is consumed from that. So let me now reconnect again my the ST link. So the power will come through the ST link, but now let's see when I will repower again my clock and build, save and build and load. So now all the code has been loaded with a new 100 clock. So we have seen 41 million pair of consumption. And now when I review the power again, you can see that it's around 58. It will be around 60 million pair, but this is just the power of the clock. So you can see you really add one third of the power just by increasing the clock speed. Okay, so that was for this microcontroller for the STM32F4, um, how we can change the clock and how we should be careful about the power consumption. I hope that today with this fourth episode, you could understood and clearly uh, see what is the impact of changing the clock on the microcontroller. Hope you enjoy this and now get ready for the new chapter will be for analogic to digital converter. Thank you so much and wish you a very good day.